Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Let us move on to the next problem. So here, the major products A and B formed in the following reaction sequence are, a chemical reaction is given here. We have a cyclohexene all uh, is given here as the starting material. Ethyl vinyl ether in the presence of NBS is used in the first step. We end up with uh, some intermediate or a product A and this further undergoes reaction with uh, tributyl tin hydride AABN in uh, solvent benzene and heating gives a product B. So, we have to identify what is the product A and what is the product B. This uh, question was asked in December 2011. So, we have four different combinations of uh, products are given A, B and A, B like uh, different compounds are given. So, if uh, let us just look at what are all the compounds uh, that are given. So, we have a bromoacetal is uh, given here as the first product and in the second case also we have a similar uh, product which is uh, a bromoacetal and uh, third also has the bromoacetal. The only difference is the position of bromine is shifted in this particular case and uh, in the last one also, we have a bromine at a different position. So, these are all the four uh, different uh, first uh, uh, intermediates are given and the second intermediates if you look at uh, three of them are uh, cyclic uh, derivatives and one uh, has the ethoxy unit present in the cyclic ether. In one of the product, uh, the ethoxy unit is lost and in the third one, we do not have a cyclic uh, product. Uh, what happened? Uh, in this particular case is the bromine atom is completely lost. So, the debromination actually happened. So, that is the only thing happened in the third combination and in the fourth one we have the ethoxy derivative that is still present. So, we have four different combination of the first intermediate and the second product are given. We are going to find out how the reaction actually proceeds. So, let us talk the reaction between the ethyl vinyl ether and N bromo succinamide. So, these are all the two uh, reagents uh, which are given in this reaction. Uh, ethyl vinyl ether is one of the substrate and the N bromo succinamide is a reagent that is used in this reaction. So, uh, the major difference between the previous cases of uh, NBS reaction and this is one major difference is here. Uh, what we are uh, going to see the role of NBS is a electrophilic bromination and not a radical because in the radical reactions we do need allylic or benzylic uh, positions are required. So, in those cases only the reaction actually work. Here we do not have an allylic or uh, benzylic position. So, here this uh, reaction that is the NBS role is basically for the electrophilic bromination only. So, uh, in this particular case, uh, the first step we have a electron rich pi bond and we have a bromine atom. So, as we know how the reaction actually proceeds, uh, the electron rich uh, pi bond attacks the bromine to form the bromonium ion as shown here. So, this is the first step. So, once the bromonium ion is formed, this bromonium ion will be attacked by the allylic alcohol, we have a nucleophilic oxygen, we also have a double bond, but the oxygen is much more uh, nucleophilic. So, oxygen is much more nucleophilic than the pi bond. So, that is the reason those lone pair of electrons attack this particular carbon atom with the concomitant opening of the cyclic bromonium ion derivative. So, we end up with the opening of this particular bromonium ion. So, this addition actually takes place via uh, similar to a Marconic of addition and we end up with the corresponding uh, derivative as shown here. Uh, in the first step, when this particular bond is broken, we actually have a negative charge on this uh, nitrogen. So, in other words, what we have is a uh, succinamide derivative was liberated in the first step. So, that uh, succinamide takes up the hydrogen atom from this corresponding alcohol unit. So, this hydrogen is actually captured by the succinamide and we end up with the uh, simple uh, succinamide uh, as the byproduct in this particular reaction and this 
oxygen actually forms a ether linkage with this particular uh, yes, ethyl vinyl ether. So, that is how the reaction actually uh, proceeds. So, in the second step is uh, we are using a AIBN is used in this particular uh, reaction. So, asobis isobutro uh, nitrile uh, is the starting material. So, this undergoes thermolytic cleavage because this reaction is heated in benzene solvent. So, during the thermolysis what happens is the decomposition of this uh, AIBN gives the 2 cyano 2 propyl radical with the concomitant loss of the nitrogen. So, the liberation of nitrogen is the driving force for this particular reaction to occur. So, this leads a radical intermediate and this radical now reacts with uh, tributyl tin hydride. So, the tributyl tin hydride that SNH bond is broken by the corresponding radical and we end up with the tin radical as shown here. So, the tributyl tin radical is formed in this particular case and uh, this tributyl tin is uh, the reagent which will uh, further undergo reactions. So, uh, once the tributyl tin radical is formed, so this will now attack the corresponding the bromoacetyl derivative. So, the CBr bond is homolytically cleaved by the radical atom. So, in that case this bond one of the bonded electron is shared between the bromine uh, tin bond and the other uh, goes to the carbon atom present in the system. So, we end up with the alkyl radical. So, for simplicity we are not showing the hydrogen atom on this particular radical. So, now we have a carbon radical that is formed in this reaction. So, this carbon radical will now undergo addition reaction to the alkene double bond that is present. So, we have two positions uh, on which this particular addition or the radical reaction may take place. So, the first one is called the 5 exo trig and uh, 6 endo trig that means, uh, the geometry of the particular carbon is the trigonal geometry and uh, when the cyclization takes place on the fifth carbon, the double bond is actually in the exo that means, outside of the ring. So, that is the reason this is called the exo trig cyclization uh, basically according to Baldwin rule, uh, this 5 exo trig cyclizations are most favored and the other one is the 6 endo trig again the carbon is a trigonal carbon that is a sp2 hybridized carbon and this radical can now attack this particular carbon that is the carbon number uh, labeled here as the sixth one. Then what will happen is uh, we will end up with a six member derivative as shown here. Uh, so, here we will again have a different uh, if you look at the number of uh, atoms present in this ring, we start with the carbon radical as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. So, there is a bond between 1 and 6 carbon atom as shown here. So, this is what is called 1, 6 uh, or the 6 endo trig cyclization gives this product. And if it is a 1, 5 cyclization that means, carbon number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, a bond is formed between carbon number 1 and 5. So, this is another one. So, there are two types of cyclizations are possible on this particular alkene and according to Baldwin rule 5 exotrig and 6 endotrig both are favored reaction, but under this particular condition where we are using this actually favors the kinetically uh, favored 5 exotric cyclization is the most favored reaction and uh, this reaction uh, may occur, but in minor quantities this uh, reaction occurs because here if you look at the structure, the structure is little bit uh, uh, strained one. So, that is the reason uh, this particular 6 membered ring is not formed because it looks like a bridged one on this particular carbon, whereas here it is a very nice 6 phi uh, ring fusion. So, that is the reason this uh, there is no bridge head, uh, there is no extra bridge head on this particular uh, ring junction. So, this is the therm kinetically favored product and this 1 phi exotric cyclization is the most prefer preferred one according to Baldwin rule and that is the only product that is formed. 
and here we have the carbon radical. So, this carbon radical will actually react with the uh, hydrogen radical which was liberated from the tributyl tin hydride in the first step. So, that is the termination reaction and we end up with the bromoacetal. So, this first step actually leads to the, the radical cyclization leads to the bromoacetal as shown here and the first step uh, the NBS actually is used for the electrophilic bromination reaction with ethyl vinyl ether gives this particular uh, intermediate A and this undergoes radical cyclization to give the cyclic product as shown here. So, this uh, the second step is the radical invo uh, intermediate involved reaction. And let us move on to the next uh, or a little bit uh, complicated uh, uh, reaction. So, here we are going to find out what is the major product that is formed in the following reaction and this question was asked in December 2015. So, here a starting material is given this undergoes a reaction with the tributyl tin hydride A i b n mediated uh, radical cyclization reaction. So, if you look at the previous case and in this case we already have the bromoacetal derivative is already present in the starting material. In the previous one we actually prepared it and we did the cyclization. So, we can also assume that uh, this reaction is going to be very similar to the one what we have seen because here the only difference is we have two double bonds. In the previous case we had only one double bond. So, the reaction was between the competition was between 5 membered and the 6 membered, but here we have two different double bonds. So, we have to see how the reaction actually proceeds. So, uh, the second step is the Jones oxidation. So, whatever the intermediate that is formed that is uh, undergoing oxidation. So, these are all the two steps that are involved. So, we have 4 uh, A, B and uh, C, D are the four different compounds uh, that are expected after the two step transformation. Let us see how the reaction actually will proceed. So, we already know how the radical is formed. So, we will just move very quickly. The A, B and undergoes thermal decomposition to give the cyanopropyl radical and this reacts with the tributyl tin hydride to give the tributyl tin radical. So, up to here we already know. So, let us move on to the next one. So, how this tributyl tin radical will react here. So, as we know this C, B or bond is the uh, homolytic uh, cleavage is possible on this particular bond. So, this bond is cleaved and we end up with the bromine radical and the alkyl radical that is formed. So, once the alkyl radical is formed, we have various combinations that are possible. Let us look at what are all the different combinations. So, the first one is we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. There is a 1, 5 bond that is possible. So, that is the reason we have a spiro derivative as shown here. So, if you look at uh, this structure and this one, we have a spiro product that is formed. So, that occurs by the 1, 5 endotrig uh, cyclization leads to this particular product. And the next one is, it can also undergo a 8 membered ring formation. So, let us look at what is the 8 membered ring. So, here we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8. So, the external uh, uh, that is the uh, double bond, the methylene carbon is the place where the radical, this uh, methylene radical attacks this particular uh, methylene uh, double bond that is supposed to give this 8 membered ring. So, this is uh, another type of uh, reaction that may proceed. So, what is the third one? The third one is basically the 1, 6 combination. So, that means there is a sixth carbon atom here on the double bond. So, we are actually talking about this 5 and 6 double bond, alkene double bond. So, that gives a cyclic system like this one. So, 6, 5 uh, ring system is formed in this particular case also. So, there is 1, 5 case and there is also 1, 6 case. So, these are all the two most preferred uh, cyclization according to Baldwin rule. And the next one is this radical is simply quenched to give our corresponding methyl derivative. So, there is one hydrogen uh, radical adds to this particular methylene radical and we end up with a methyl group. In other words, the bromine atom is uh, that is debromination actually takes place and that is going to be under this uh, ethoxy uh, ether is basically oxidized by the zone is uh, reagent to the corresponding carbonyl group. That means, we end up with an ester, simple ester. 
So, here simply the debromination takes place. So, these are all the four possible uh, reactions uh, of or the fate of this particular alkyl radical. Now, we are going to see how the reaction actually proceeds. So, the bromo radical, uh, the bromine atom is uh, attacked by the uh, tin radical and we end up with the corresponding uh, alkyl radical. So, this alkyl radical generally undergoes the most preferred cyclization is the 1 5 or the 5 exotric cyclization is the kinetically favored one and in this particular case also that is what is the reaction actually occurs and we end up with the corresponding uh, spiro derivative. And of course, uh, this 6 endo is also possible, but unfortunately this is a minor reaction or a side reaction. So, under kinetically favored condition only the exotric cyclization takes place and uh, that is the reason the major product in our case is going to be the spiro derivative and uh, this spiro derivative uh, there is alkyl radical here and uh, this will add with uh, hydrogen atom from uh, tributyl tin hydride and we end up with the uh, saturated carbon and we have the ethyl uh, ether is present and this undergoes uh, Jones oxidation to give the gamma spirolactone. So, when we oxidize this one we end up with the gamma spirolactone. So, this is the reaction that is actually occurring and uh, there is a paper by uh, Professor A. Sri Krishna and here he had actually used this particular reaction. And let us move on to the next problem. So, this reaction is a little bit even more complicated. If you look at there are too many structures are given here, do not get confused. These are all very simple uh, reactions only. We have to find out uh, the intermediate A and the product B formed in the following sequence of reactions. We have a carboxylic acid. So, the carboxylic acid is uh, treated with uh, uh, DCC, DMAP and this corresponding uh, hydroximate uh, thio hydroximate uh, compound and uh, then we end up with the intermediate A. That intermediate A undergoes free radical reaction that means tributyl tin hydride instead of hydride we have deuteride. So, hydrogen atom is replaced by deuterium and aavn is a radical initiator under uh, benzene reflux condition we end up with the product B. We are going to find out how the reaction actually proceeds. And this question was asked in June 2017. So, we have different uh, type of intermediates are given for A, the structure of A uh, is very similar in combination 1 and 2, but uh, the final product has the carbonyl unit in one of the product, but in the other one we do not have the carbonyl unit. So, the second step is the only thing where some change had occurred. And in the combination 3 and 4, 3 is uh, actually a little bit uh, more uh, complicated one, we end up with a tricyclic product as uh, our uh, final product and the next, uh, the last combination has a simple uh, loss of the carboxylic acid and replacement of the carboxylic acid by a deuterium atom. So, that is the only thing happening in this particular case. So, these are all the four uh, different permutation combinations for this reaction. We are going to find out how the reaction actually proceeds. So, let us uh, look at how the reaction actually proceeds. So, in the first step uh, we are starting the reaction with the deprotonation of the acid by DCC. So, here the R group is nothing but a cyclohexyl unit. So, for simplicity I have not drawn that structure and similarly the R group is attached uh, the carboxylic unit is attached here. So, for uh, simplicity I am also uh, replacing this particular unit with the simple R1. So, that uh, the scheme looks uh, neat and clean and there will be no confusion for you to understand. So, that is the reason there are two simplicities, uh, simple ways of representing the structures are given here. The R unit is nothing but the cyclohexyl unit and this R prime is the bicyclic system. So, the first step is the deprotonation of the acid by DCC. We have a acidic uh, hydrogen present on this particular carboxylic acid. So, that hydrogen is uh, abstracted by the uh, nucleophilic nitrogen. So, we end up with a carboxylate anion. So, this is the first step that is happening. So, once the carboxylate anion is formed, 
So, this uh, nucleophilic carboxylate anion now attacks the DCC to give the O acyl isourea intermediate. So, here is the shift of bonds are shown here. The car carboxylate anion attacks the central carbon atom with the concomitant shift of the bond towards the nitrogen because nitrogen is having a positive charge. So, to neutralize that, that uh, these bonded electrons are shifted towards the nitrogen. So, what we end up is basically the isourea. So, what is urea? Urea is nothing but uh, carbonyl with the NH2 and NH2. So, this is a simple urea and we have the isourea unit here. So, uh, and this is on the oxygen. So, this is what is called O acyl. The acyl unit is actually present. This is the acyl unit. So, the acyl unit is present on the oxygen and if it is a double bond that is a simple urea since we have a single bond. So, we are going to call this as a O acyl isourea intermediate and this O acyl intermediate is being attacked by the DMAP because in the reaction we are using DMAP as a catalyst. So, this DMAP is a stronger nucleophile because nitrogen is more nucleophilic than alcohol because uh, we will see what is the alcohol unit we are using uh, in the next step. So, here we have the DMAP which is used in the catalytic uh, amount. So, this DMAP, this nitrogen, the uh, pyridine nitrogen attacks the carbonyl carbon atom. So, we end up with a N acyl intermediate or we call this as a reactive amide and uh, even though we call this as a reactive amide, it is also called as an activated ester because we are starting with the carboxylic acid and this carboxylic acid is being activated to something where it can easily undergo the reaction. So, that is the reason we have uh, uh, DCC is used, DMAP is used to create a very, very highly reactive species. So, that the reaction proceeds very effectively and we have an activated amide. So, CO in bond when it is present, it is the amide unit. So, this is nothing but the N acyl intermediate or the reactive amide. And now, we bring in that our alcoholic unit. So, this corresponding alcoholic unit is the one that will attack this electrophilic carbon that is the activated carbonyl carbon. So, we have two places where the reaction may occur. One is the oxide anion, another one is the thiol. Thiol is also nucleophilic, but according to HSAB principle, a hard acid will react with a hard base, a soft acid will react with a soft base. So, here we have an oxide anion which is a hard, hard nucleophile thiol is a basically a soft nucleophile and here this carbonyl carbon is basically the hard acid. So, you know hard and hard will react very quickly compared to soft and hard that is one and second the oxygen and the carbon they belong to the same row. So, that means their S and P orbitals will have very close energy for a nice overlap molecular orbital overlap is possible whereas, sulfur is in the next row. So, that means the overlap of uh, sulfur's orbitals with carbon's orbitals are not going to be that effective. So, that is also another reason where uh, the oxide anion attacks this corresponding electrophilic carbonyl uh, carbon. So, that is the reason this reaction leads to a Barton thiohydroxamate ester. So, this is the thiol unit and uh, we have the hydroxamate esters that is formed here. So, the product that is formed here is shown here and this actually loses one of the hydrogen atom and because when the reaction actually proceeds there is a positive charge happens on the nitrogen atom. So, to neutralize that positive charge here we see we have a positive charge on the starting material. So, to neutralize the positive charge this hydrogen's electron this SH bond electrons are shifted and you can see how the entire electron shifts over the aromatic system and we end up with the Barton thiohydroxamate ester. So, this is the first step and when we are using a carboxylic acid to form an ester here although it is a thiohydroxamate ester it is still a ester unit. So, an acid getting converted to ester using DCC and DMAP combination is called as Steglich esterification reaction. So, what we did was we did the Steglich esterification 
of the acid with the corresponding thiohydramic acid. So, in the first step we prepared the Barton thiohydroxamate esters. So, as we have seen the double bond the single bond but in the thiol is now shifted towards the carbon sulfur double bond. So, this is the Barton thiohydramate ester, ester which is the very crucial intermediate and we are going to do the next step because this is a two step reaction. So, in the second step what happens is basically we start with the same AABN mediated reaction. So, you already know how the reaction actually proceeds. So, AABN undergoes thermal decomposition to give the corresponding uh, propyl radical and the only difference from the previous case is here we have a deuterium uh, atom instead of the hydrogen. So, that is the only difference. So, this end up with the still we get the tributyl tin radical and the deuterium radical those are formed. So, this resulting tributyl tin radical will be used in our next step. So, we have the uh, hydrothioxamate ester and that reacts with the tributyl tin hydride to give the corresponding uh, here uh, we have shown couple of steps the first one is the decarboxylation. So, and formation of the radical that alkyl radical and also another sulfur tin bonded derivative. So, we have three different uh, things actually happening in this particular case. So, the flow of electrons are actually given here all are like a single electron transfer reaction the tributyl tin hydrates forms a bond with the sulfur. So, the formation of tin sulfur bond is the driving force for this particular transformation or for this particular reaction. So, this is the most crucial one once that form bond is formed then automatically the nitrogen oxygen bond this bond is actually broken and we end up with the corresponding pyridine uh, sh as shown here uh, derivative shown here and this entire unit is lost as a carbon dioxide molecule. So, there is a R C bond is homolytically cleaved and this oxygen uh, nitrogen bond is also homolytically cleaved. So, one electron from the alkyl carbonyl bond and the oxygen carbonyl bond both join together and we end up with a C double bond O C double bond O that is carbon dioxide gas is liberated. So, there are two driving forces for this reaction because once the carbon dioxide is formed it is leaving the system as gaseous uh, state. So, that means it will never come back to the system. So, in other words the reaction is driven in the only one direction or in the forward direction very effectively and also the sulfur tin bond is a very very strong bond. So, that is the reason two driving forces are there for this reaction to occur which results in the alkyl radical formation. So, once the alkyl radical is formed this alkyl radical can be quenched by uh, reaction with uh, two different things one with uh, either uh, tributyl tin deuteride uh, can react with this alkyl radical to give our uh, final decarboxylated uh, product or this can react with the deuteride radical which was liberated in the previous step they both can combine to give the corresponding our uh, final product. So, in both the cases uh, this is the deuteroalkane that is the one which is formed in the next step. So, what happened was we started off with the carboxylic acid here that is the COOH was there that carboxylic acid is lost in other words the reaction overall reaction is the decarboxylation reaction it was uh, first uh, carried out by Barton. So, this reaction is called the Barton decarboxylation reaction. We also had seen earlier the Barton reaction. So, in the Barton reaction what happens is the nitride radical is converted to the nitro uh, nitroso alcohol derivatives. So, that is the Barton reaction. Here in the Barton decarboxylation we end up or we convert a carboxylic acid into the corresponding alkane derivatives. So, this is the overall reaction and uh, both the reactions are facilitated by the radical intermediates that are formed. So, if we finalize uh, how the reaction actually proceeds. So, we start with the corresponding carboxylic acid uh, this gives the hydro 
barton ester or the barton hydroxy thioxamate ester is formed and this undergoes radical reaction to give the decarboxylated final product. So, A is the first intermediate, B is the second uh, product formed in this particular transformation. Thank you.